once again we will see so right now i'm going to open my eclipse application i'm going to create a workspace a project a package and then a class i know that i'm doing it for actually what n number of times so i just want to get practice for everyone till you actually what make sure you're going to start using actually what the eclipse application frequently so that's what i'm going to do right now Okay, so now we have opened actually what the workspace over there. So this is an existing workspace. Otherwise, we will be creating uh, and uh, what is a new workspace over there. So this is an existing workspace. Now I want to create a project. So for that, I need to create go to file new a Java project. Otherwise, under the project. Java project. Okay, so then after that, give the project name. I'll just give third project any name we can give. Then the execution environment should be 1.8. Then click on finish. Yes, sorry. Uh, you guys are able to see my screen, right? So we created the third project right now so then after that inside the project we will have jr system library where it will construct all the jar files related to my java execution then after that we will have source in the real folder location we will have source and bin folder source folder to save my dot java files bin folder to save my dot class files okay so right click on the source folder go to new package So I'm going to give a name for it. Variable usage, I'll just give. So discourage package name because always actually we need to start via small letters. Okay, that's it. Variable usage. I can use underscore symbol along here. Then click on finish. Then right click on the variable usage new class. So here I will give a name for it variables and okay, variables are so here class name always should start with uppercase letter here also underscore and we can use package name starts with the lowercase letter class name starts with the uppercase letter the only difference between public and then the package here right now what we want to know means is like when we have public it comes with a keyword called public otherwise actually what package means it's like a default we don't get any keyword that just directly class class name is variables then i'll click on finish I'm not going to click on the checkbox main function. If I want to get my main function, just type MAIM control space enter. That's it. Public static void main. We got my main function. Okay. So I told you there are two types of variables. One is a local variable which has been declared inside the main function another is actually what a global variable which has been declared outside the main function so the integer x is equal to 100 integer y is equal to 200 global variables of two types one is static another one is non-static static will have a keyword called static keyword so non-static will not have any keyword 
okay so local variables can be directly utilized with help of the variable name same thing if it is a static variable we can refer them with help of my class name that's a standard practice so always actually what static members will have a single copy alone where it will be there means in the static pool then also static members can be referred with help of the variable name also whenever it is variable name the search will go to the main function there if it checks whether actually what do we have that variable if it is not then goes to the static pool when i refer with help of class name directly the search goes to static pool that's the difference here other way actually what we uh, uh, we can also utilize with the help of the objects also non static member only with the help of objects only we can utilize it okay so now how to create an object new variables this will help me to create an object that is a memory location has been created i need to give a name for the memory location obj1 equal to i gave a name for it so for variables data types are the reference for objects class names are the reference okay so now what will happen right now for me oh yeah variable dot x so yeah yeah the static member name is x right yes correct hey thank you thank you so now for me actually what i have created the object now what are the members will be loaded into the object all the global members it can be static or it can be non static it can be a variable or it can be a function functions are also called as methods everything will be loaded into the object so what are the members we have here one is integer x which is a static variable integer y which is a non static variable then my main function okay which is a static function all these things are actually what loaded here okay then sizo obj1 dot x so the static members can be accessed in three three ways refer by class name directly by the variable name then by help of the object name then non static members the only way to access is with help of actually what the non static oh sorry only with help of the object name alone got it so this is what yesterday we saw anyone has any questions on this so far guys anyone has any questions so far on this part can everyone ping me as yes if you have understood this part so far whatever we have seen i want to reply from everyone everyone clear right superb great so now we have seen actually one the basic level how to utilize everything okay so now what we are going to do we are going to actually what uh, see it in a actually what in a detail be as um, when we have different types of actually what objects and all those things how to utilize it okay that's what we are going to see right now so let me browse and take some an existing project so i will import an existing project in case i have an existing workspace over there i want to import sorry existing project in some other place i want to get that project what i need to do means go to file import then here general existing projects into workspace click on next then browse the place where you have i have the g drive selenium and then selenium batch 
Eclipse code. So select the folder. Okay, so these are the projects I have everything. I just want to get that. Uh, sorry, I that's a workspace over there. Sorry, this one. This is the project. Okay, Java Basics one. So like this first project, second project, third project, like the Java Basics one is the one of the project over there. That is what I'm going to get it. Okay, I got this project. Click on finish. See, I have got my project here. Got it. Okay, so in this, I have some programs that we need to see now. Okay, so I want you guys to actually what help me on executing this program. Okay, so that's what we are going to see right now. So this time yesterday, everyone actually what I've seen actually what how to do the execution. And then you guys have helped me on some parts over there actually for the execution. So today it's like entirely you guys are going to help me here. execute this so if we execute what will be the output for this that is what we're going to see right now so I want everyone so just be with me give it a try so you will be able to do it in case if you're not able to get it no worries I will be helping you okay just give it a try so if you're not able to get it anyway actually what I am there to help you no worries okay so first I'll ask actually what um, hey, hi, Tony. Hey, hi, yes, Tony. Hello. Yes. Hi, Tony. Uh, can you tell me? So, when I execute this program, first a memory location will be created. The memory location name will be my class name with some hexadecimal number. Correct? Then, yes. what is the first memory which will be created here into this memory? It's going to be a global. Uh, no, no, the first memory which will be created here. Any idea? Oh, static. Yes, it is yeah. static pool. Correct. So static pool is the first memory which will be created here. Yeah. Right. Yes. So now what are the members will be loaded into this? It will be a uh, K yes. value form. Correct. Static in K. Yes. Anything else? Uh, P, P50. This is a non-static member. Oh yeah, okay, right. So, any other static and members? And then uh, integer ten. I oh, know that is a local variable because it's declared inside the main function. This main function is a static or a non-static function? It it says uh, static void. Right? Yes. So my main function also loads over here. Clear it. Right? So apart from that we don't have any static functions over here okay these are the static members we have over here correct so next actually what a uh, hey, good hey, thanks Tony okay. so next uh, hey, hi Prajnaya so now in the static pool all the static members are loaded now what is the uh, first execution will happen and for what a memory will be created uh, so the main function which is there inside the static pool starts to execute 
when it starts to execute what will happen uh, it will first uh, uh, give memory space for i and j yes the local memory for main first is created for the public static void main that has been created first okay then after that a minute sorry for that a memory is created right now then executes so integer i 10 so these two local variables will be created inside the main function yes correct a good a good question uh, so now what will happen can you help me on executing these two lines these three lines yeah in first line uh, uh, it will print the value of i and j so correct so first thing local variable which is a string so it prints me as it is local variable anything comes in the string it will be printed as it is then plus i so which is a variable where the search will go uh, and never refer only by variable name main function. yes here do we have i variable yes that is 10 then space. a space then j 20 20 so do we have j variable in main function yes 20 in the local memory we have it prints it so what we have done right now in this step is concatenation okay anything added to a string will be joined together that is concatenated okay that's what local variable i n j local variable 10 and 20 correct yes then next can you tell me what will happen now Virginia? next uh, uh, when the next statement will execute uh, yeah it will print like global variable first yes. it will search in main function yes uh, uh, it will not get k then it will uh, go to static one correct but why actually what now this time first the search went to local memory then after that it went to the static pool yes can you tell me why actually what first the search goes to local memory then the search went to static pool can you tell me why the reason because execution starts from main ah, because when a year do we have any reference directly i am giving the variable name alone okay. only when we give the variable name alone search goes to the local memory then after that the search goes to static pool Okay, just a minute, please. Sorry, guys. Uh, Prajna, now can you tell me global vari local variable dot k? So, what is this global underscore local variable? That's my yeah. class name. So, now I'm referring the k variable with the help of my class name. Now, can you tell me where the search will go? Static pool. First, it will search in local memory pool. No. When I, whenever I refer with the help of the class name, the search will directly go to the Static pool. So when actually what it goes search in mem local memory, then static pool. Whenever I don't have any reference, only when I have the variable name alone, then only goes to the local memory, then static pool. Whenever I refer with the help of the class name, search directly goes to the static pool, and then it gets the value that is 40 here. Yeah. Got it? Very good. Thanks, Virginia. Now, can anyone tell me next step? Uh, anyone like to try? So we are creating an object. So what will happen now? Anyone like to give a try? Hello, yes. Memory will be created in the name of object. Superb. So now 
new global local underscore local variable will help me to create one memory. So that is actually what the memory name is what right now for me it is OBJ. OBJ. Correct. So the reference actually for this OBJ is actually what global underscore local variable. It is my same class. Now what will happen now? Uh, now it will contain uh, all the non-static uh, variables 50. Correct. So now it loads all the global variables, yes. all the static and non static members. Static members alone always it will take from the so static, pool. static pool because static members have a single copy. So always it takes the information from the static pool only. Okay. Then after that, non static members it always takes the default information which is present inside the program. Got it? So these are the static and non-static members we have here. So that has been loaded. Here. Got it? Any question for anyone on this? So from where actually what this has been created means from the main function. Because in the main function only we are creating this object. Yes, correct. Yeah. Next, can you tell me what will happen now? So now, uh, now we will put system dot print. That means uh, uh, we have object dot p uh, that will refer to the object memory. It will directly go to the object and print the p uh, value of p. Correct. Goes to the obj. What is the p value? That is fifty. Fifty. So it will print the value fifty. It will print fifty now. Yes, correct. Then, then obj uh, dot k. k. So it will go to the same. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Obj dot k. So now we we'll go to the object memory and print the value at k value. Yes, super. Good. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, can you tell me? Uh, hey, good. Hey, thanks, Dave. Thank you. So, next, I'll ask uh, Ishraman. Today is your mic is good? Yeah. Ishraman, yeah. Good man. Uh, now, can you tell me obj.p equal to 60? Can you tell me now what will happen? So it's a reassigning a p value to a 60. Super. So where the search will go and then where the value, what value will be changed? So it is uh, it's static pool. It no, referring with the help of object, object obj. So it goes to the so object obj. Then p value do you have? Yes, that is 50. 50. Replaces it to it's a 60. 60 yes correct then obj so, dot k equal to 90 again okay it will uh, replace with the k value for 42 90 correct so goes to the obj and OBJ. The k value changes from 40 to 90 90 yes so i told you static members has a single copy single copy so that means whenever a change applies anywhere that change applies everywhere static for the static so static pool also the value changes from 40, 40 to, to 90 90 got it guys everyone understood this part this is important that you guys need to okay static members alone is a single copy whenever a change applies it applies everywhere everywhere the static member will have a same value okay yeah now can you tell me obj dot p so yeah, it will go to object pool and uh, the printer value of p new value. Yes, the p new value is 60. 60. Yes, superb. Then next, obj dot k. k value, new value of k. It's 90. Yes, yes goes to obj dot k. What is oh, goes to obj? k value is currently what? 90. 90. Yes. Then next, global local variable. Okay, I'm just printing global local variable, then global local variable dot k. Okay. Now I'm referring with help of a class name. Class name. Where the search will go? St static pool. Ah, superb, that's it. Goes to the static pool, then gets me the value 90. Got it, guys? Everyone clear? Uh, yes, Shavan. Shavan has one question. Is it necessary to create two objects for actually what a single class 
or uh, two variables over there. No, usually we create actually what only one object alone. So right now actually what for understanding actually what the memory relocation concept I have created actually what two to three objects so that you will come to know how actually what static members and then non-static members differs because when they come go when you go for an interview when they ask what is the difference between static and non-static you will clearly come to know with example over there that's the thing we have just seen with two to three objects creation okay okay uh, Dave has Devadat has one more question. In case of static variable, can we change it directly, or we need to use object every time? Good question. So, do I need to refer obj dot k equal to ninety like that? So, the best practice always static members should be referred with the help of a class name only. Okay, always static members should be referred with the help of class name. You should not refer with object name or you should not refer directly by the variable name. Always refer static members with the help of class name only because any time static members actually what the value will be actually what in the static pool will have the proper information. Anywhere it will be same. Always refer with the help of object names only. Oh, sorry, uh, always refer with the help of the uh, class names only. So if you want to change uh, the static variable, uh, static variable amount, uh, the uh, data in there so we will always use uh, the class dot uh, the static variable is equal to it changes change number right correct like, so this right now for this one global underscore local variable is the class name so i will give global underscore local variable dot k equal to 100 okay like that that is the best practice okay, okay. so now before i execute this this five lines of code alone i want you to do it take a paper and pen just draw it like this. so these things leave it just create one object here so what will happen for this alone these six steps alone just execute it just i'll give a five minutes of time okay it'll not take much time then after that i will i will actually what make you guys to execute again first before someone tries here I want everyone to try the second part alone. Okay. Because I told everywhere static members will have a single copy. Non static members, it will take the default value. That means when you create a new object, what will be the static int k value? And then what is your p value that will be loaded? Then after that, actually, what print the values? And then now when you replace the value of k, which is a static, so then where all the replace will happen? Then if it is P, where all the replace will happen because static members only actually what will replace everywhere. Non-static members will replace only for that object level alone. Understood this? Uh, can everyone reply me as yes? Can you try this one? Because so simple. I already told you my sessions are not like actually what I will be always doing the uh, class, uh, entire information because of no use for you guys. So we have to make it useful for you because why you guys are paying to me means it's like you have to get the knowledge. Okay. So that's the one thing we are focusing here. So try to put some efforts so that it be easy. End of the session, you will be clear on understanding each and every part. Okay. A small hard work will make sure you are learning this entire class within this period of time, two and a half months. Okay. That's the one thing. Okay, so just five minutes over there till eight five. Uh, three minutes is more than enough to finish it. Just try it. Okay, thank you.
Hello. Yes. So you guys are able to do that? Yes. Super. Great. Okay. So let you guys try it over here right now. Uh, hi, Shweta. Hi, Mulli. Uh, so can you try for me this next part? So I'm going to create a new object here. Yeah. First, it will create the memory location called OBJ1. Yes. It creates a new memory, which is OBJ1. Then it loads uh, static and non-static members. Yes, just give me a minute. Yes, it loads the static and non -static. So static members will be taken from where? Uh, OBJ1. OBJ, uh, OBJ. Uh, so all the static members will be loaded from which place to the OBJ1? Uh, from OBJ. Uh, no, from the static pool only, all the static members will be taken. Okay. Yeah, okay. So static in K. The value of current value of actually what k is 90. 90. So 90 will be loaded. Then my main function. Yes. Then, not then uh, it will load that also. Now uh, what in, will be the non-static member value in p? In p is equals to 60. Uh, no. That's what the default value only will be taken for the non static member. Non static, okay. Only for the static, we will have actually what the current value everywhere same. Okay. But the static pool, we will take the static members. So, non static members will be taken the default information only. Okay. Uh, is everyone clear on this part, please? Because this is so important. Is everyone clear on this part alone? Can everyone ping me as yes? Okay, super. Good. A good dev data. Okay, good guys. So now, next. Okay, so obj1.p. So I'm having it in a string. So string will be printed as it is. Then obj1.p. Then space. Yes, space. Space 50. Correct. So goes to the obj1. What is the p value? That is 50. Correct. Then next obj1 dot k dot k space yes. 90 yes obj1 dot k goes to obj1 k value is 90 now yes superb superb then then it will print global underscore local variable space yes then uh, 90 so where the search will go now when i refer with the help of a class name it will go to this global variable class. So where, whenever I refer with the help of a class name, where the search should go? It will go to the uh, uh, static. Superb, correct. Whenever we refer with the help static of a class pool. name, search always goes to static pool. Static pool. The value is 90. Superb, yes. Okay, hey, good, um, good Shweta. Thank you. Yeah. So next I'll ask, uh, hey, hi Jagadish. Uh, hey, hi Jagadish. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so now can you tell me, so global underscore local variable dot k equal to 20. Now what will happen? Yeah, the k will be updated to value 20. Uh, so where the search will the, go? Uh, 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 the class, the to the static in. Superb. It goes to the static pool. Why it goes to static pool? So uh, it's a static variable. So... No, no, no. Static so... member, that's okay. But why actually the search directly goes to static? So you're, you're referring the variable with the class. Correct. So... Reference actually what I'm doing with the help of a class name. So it yes. goes to static pool. Changes 90 to? To 20. 20. And that refers to every... Superb. Yeah. Now, when it changes to 20 year, so this static member always will have a uh, single copy. Single copy. Yeah. So that's why everywhere, actually what it changes from 90 to 20 now. 20. Yes. Clear for everyone? Good. So now, obj one dot k equal okay just a minute hey good uh, good Jagadish. uh now i'll ask um 
I have a question. Hey, yeah, yes, Tony. Um, going back to what she was saying, uh, OBJ object one dot p doesn't have doesn't she, you have to add the two of them? Uh, you are talking about this line, Tony. Yes. Uh, so uh, OBJ one dot p, which is a string. So we are right. printing as it is. Right. Then concatenation happening here, which will be joined. So obj one dot p goes to the obj one. What is the p value that is? 50. Uh, 50. That right. fifty will be taken. Why whenever we create the object, the p value was fifty, but actually it was not taken six months because whenever we create an object, static members the current value will be loaded here. Non-static members always the default information only will be loaded into the object. Right, but I will expect you to have two values, one for object one dot p, yeah, plus object one dot p again. Uh, class dot object one dot p. Um, I'm not getting sorry, Tony. Come again. Well, that's why I'm. That's why I was confused. Um, you have an addition, right? Obj, go back to yeah. We're here. Obj okay. one dot p plus the same thing again. Yeah. Okay, okay so, you're saying actually what will that be added to right. 50 plus 50. No, no, anything comes with the string will be treated as a string. That means actually what whatever which is present inside the double quotes will be treated as it is. So obj one dot p will be printed as it is. Okay, so this one actually what is referring a variable. Anything comes with a string in double quotes will be treated as a string. So that's why it was printing obj one dot p as it is. Then here, when we are adding it actually what plus obj one dot p, it's a concatenation. Anything added to a string will be concatenated, that is joined together. So that's what here was happening. Okay, here concatenation is what happening over there. Okay. That answers your question, uh, Tony? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, super, great. So now, so next thing I'll ask uh, a hi progeny. Hi, Mindy. So now can you tell me, so we have seen till global local variable dot k. So now I'm going to change it global local variable dot k equal to 20. Now can you tell me what will happen? In static pole k value, it will get placed 20. Yeah, sorry, sorry, just a minute. We have done it. Oh, we have already changed it. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. OBJ one dot k equal to seventy. Can you do this? Because we have already done that. We are here. OBJ one dot k equal to seventy. Now what will happen? Now again the value is replaced seventy. Ah, uh, so where? In which place? Static pool. Uh, no. Where we are referring with what? Uh, using object one. So first, the search goes to OBJ one. Do we have k here? Yes. We yes. Have. The value of 20 will be changed to 70. 70. Along with that, what will happen? Everywhere the change will apply to 70. Yeah. Got it, right? Yes. So, next thing next is obg1.p equal to 25. Yeah, in object one, okay. yes, in object one memory, yeah, that p value replaced 25. Correct. Will it change anywhere else apart from this object? No. No. Because objects will have duplicate memories. Only static members, sorry, uh, non static members will have duplicate memories. Static members will have a single copy. Yes. Super. Yes. Then? Then another object will create. Correct. So I'm creating an another object, which is OBJ2. Then all static member will load it here. Yes, correct. Then after that, now what will happen? So all the static members, st static members from where it will be loaded to this object? From static pool. Yes, correct. From the static, because it always takes the current value because static members are a single copy. Static in k equal to 70. Then my and main function. Main function. And the local value, uh, sorry, local non-static variable p with value. Yes, the non-static member value always takes the default value 
in p equal to 50. Got it, guys? Everyone clear on this part? Okay, good. Hey, good. Uh, thanks, Prajini. So now next, actually, what? Um, Tony, uh, you like to give a try? Now, what will be the output for these things? Okay. Um, these things, yeah. Global local variable dot k. So k would be um, 70. Yes, where the search will go? The search will go uh, from object to? Global underscore local variable. That is, now I'm referring with the help of a class name. Whenever I refer with the help of a class name, where the search should go? Oh, it'll go from the static. Super. It goes to the static pool because refer, referring with the help of a class name, always the search goes to static pool. Then it gets me 70 there. Super. Next. Okay. Object 2P. Yes. Uh, we'll go. Uh, we'll search in the uh, um, uh, So it's OBJ2. OBJ2 is what? It's my object. Right. So it goes to the OBJ2 object. Here we yeah. have. Here do we have a P value? P is 50. Yes, it takes 50. Correct. Yes, then? Then K, K will be uh, seven, um, 70. Yes, where, where the search will go? OBJ2 dot K means? OBJ2. Super. Two. Yes, do we have K? Yes, it is 70. Yes, then OBJ dot P. Okay, P will go to object two and then P no. will be 50. Uh, now it is OBJ dot P. Ah, OBJ dot P, right, right. OBJ, okay, it's going back to the first object. Super, yes. The, P the one in the center. And yes. then P was uh, 60, I think. Yes, correct. Goes to the OBJ okay. and then it's 60. Correct, yes. Then next, OBJ one dot P. So BJ1 would go back to the one on the left side. Yes. And then P was valued at 25. Yes, that's it. So what is that important thing that you guys learned in this entire program is static members will have a single copy. Non-static members will have multiple copies different on each and every object level. That's what this entire session. So now you guys understood what is the need of a static what is the need of a non-static understood? Static members will have always a single copy. So in your entire program level, if you need a single copy, that need not to be changed anywhere. And then it should maintain same everywhere, go for static. If you want actually what separate separately, actually what in different, different places, a different level of values. So you will go with non-static. Okay, so the concept you understood in real time situation, how to apply all those things, we will see when we come to Selenium, all those things also. Uh, so, understood, guys? Any questions from anyone on this so far? So, I just need to know one thing uh, a small feedback right now. I know that I'm going slow, and then I just need to know whether whatever speed I'm going is that you guys are comfortable or you want me to speed up or you want me to go in the same pace or you want me to slow down so that alone I just need to know uh, so that based on that I will continue on the upcoming sessions can everyone just give me a small feedback in the chat window is it go is good with the speed give me as good with the speed over there otherwise increase or less speed down let me know everything I just want to reply from everyone can everyone just ping me? Good. So let me go with the stream speed. Right? So I will tell you clearly actually what we will take the sessions a little bit slow like this only. But the good thing is actually what you will be able to understand each and every concept thoroughly. That's the one thing. Be sure, Robert. Uh, actually, you just see for yesterday's class video, yesterday or not came, right? Just see the yesterday's class video 
and then today the continuation you will be clear on the static and also yesterday one day alone you are not came right so just go through that one video and then the today's session you will be able to catch up with it okay cool okay so with this i'll stop for today so tomorrow we'll again continue with the session i am going to give you assignments now so it's mandated that everyone just give a try so two programs i will be forwarding to you okay so just i want everyone to try this also today program whatever we tried right now in the class right same thing actually what you have to try okay everything if you are trying it over there you have to draw this flow chart take a paper and pen draw this flow chart over there do it step by step then after that come here execute the program then when you execute the program just compare whether your output matches actually what with the real output mudli uh, yeah yes prajani uh, can i know means what and all to uh, which topic you are going to cover tomorrow uh, tomorrow actually what we will start with the functions because variables we have understood right so tomorrow the functions we have will be starting uh, methods methods of functions okay okay so nothing in case if you guys are missing so just try to go through the video which i am sending over there so because uh, the reason became that is actually what for this only because i know for sure everyone cannot come for every day you might be taking a off for one day or two day if you guys are not able to listen on the same day at least by the weekend please go through that so that the next week when you are coming you will be with the same pace that's the one thing okay don't worry anyway i will be going slow only so i know that actually what you have to understand each and every concept in a detailed way so i'll be going slow only no worries okay yeah thanks guys to tomorrow we'll meet by same time and then try to do the assignment so it will be easy for you to catch up okay so you will find interesting when you try to do the assignment on the same day or something it'll be easy i uh, yes robert so you can just ask with vijay over there so are you getting uh, the uh, everyone guys guys are getting the uh, videos right for prajini alone i need to change the mail id i'll do that apart from that everyone you guys are getting i hope so okay good thanks guys thank you bye guys robert you can just speak with vijay over there so you can get with him okay thanks guys thank you so much bye bye